And part of the great reason I wanted to be here is because of what we're getting ready to do, uh, because we're going to be honoring some dear friends of mine, and Bill and Callie Starrett. Uh, this is the wonderful thing that we've been doing since 2008 at these banquets, is presenting the RPTS Faithful, Faithful Servant Award that we grant to someone who's a graduate of RPTS and has spent a lifetime serving the Lord faithfully. And that's what we really look for, those who have been faithful. And tonight we sing from Psalm 97, and we chose that psalm because it says, let the many island nations be glad. And uh, certainly Bill and Callie have brought the gladness of the gospel to two of those island nations. When I was a young man, I began to hear back in those days to pray for Bill and Pizza because uh, that's the name she went by because that was easier to pronounce, I think, in the J Japanese culture. At least that's my understanding. And began to pray for these missionaries. Back in the 90s, as I was a young minister in uh, Kokomo, Indiana, uh, we didn't usually get a lot of uh, missionaries traveling through Kokomo. They usually went to the bigger cities. But uh, Bill and Callie came to Kokomo. And I still remember the sermon that Bill preached there. It was on the parable of the man building the bigger barns. And his message, message was be rich toward God rather than being rich according to this world. And certainly, uh, I think that really highlights what Bill and Callie are. They're rich toward God. They've invested all of their life in the service of others. They spent 20 years approximately in Japan as missionaries there, uh, serving uh, that congregation of people. Uh, they learned the language. They learned the culture and they uh, uh, prevailed during all those years there in Japan. And then they went for another 15 years to the Mediterranean, to the island of Cyprus, uh, Cali's homeland, and uh, they had a wonderful ministry there as well. And I think their ministry has been marked as I've heard the stories of caring for widows, of caring for people, the lost, of bringing the gospel, uh, of salvation to people, uh, they've been a, a couple that have really poured themselves out to refugees. Uh, the island of Cyprus is a place where many come from Europe and Asia and find refuge, and they've certainly poured their lives out to them. One of the great blessings of Miriam and my life is that when we moved here eight years ago, uh, we became basically neighbors uh, to Bill and Callie. They live about a mile down the same road from us. Our first night in our home, we slept on air mattresses they supplied. And uh, we have enjoyed the rich fellowship that, uh, over these uh, number of years. Uh, we know Bill and Callie as those who pray uh, faithfully, who are always have an evangelistic uh, spirit to them, wanting to engage neighbors with the gospel, those who want to see the church grow and prosper, those who care about the denomination, the seminary, the mission field, uh, they just have that kind of heart and spirit about them. And there is so much more I could say, but I'll let you, first of all, just read about them some more in our, 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 our program tonight. But I want to just go now to the video a tribute that we have that their three daughters of Niki, Ivani, and Christina have prepared. I think you'll learn a lot more just by watching that video. So I'll have Noah start that at this time. <laughs> Thank you. 
Well, we know that what we all long to hear one day when we get to heaven are those words from our Savior, well done, good and faithful servant. And uh, that's what we're striving toward. And this is just a, a stop along that way. Uh, we really see that in Bill and Callie and all that they've done in their life of service uh, to us and the church. And so uh, we're very thankful to be able to honor you tonight. And Though the award does go to Bill, uh, it 
wouldn't be possible, and he'd be the first one to admit it without Collie right by his side. Uh, um, uh, they're just an amazing couple uh, together as a team. You, you can't think of Bill without thinking of Callie. And so uh, <laughs> this really is a, a, a word that goes to both of you. And so uh, I have here for you two things to present. Uh, first of all is, uh, I'm opening it backwards, it looks like, <laughs> oh, there's a cover, there there's a cover. Uh, let me just read that to you. Uh, the 2022 Faithful Servant Award, Reverend William Sterrett, commit to faithful men who will be able to teach others also, 2 Timothy 2.2, from RPTS. Thank you. And then your friends have been sending us all kinds of letters and remembrances, and so uh, Kim Backenstow has been collecting those and compiled them into a book, and I think uh, this will probably be a keepsake for you as you bring back a lot of memories and just our great thanks to you. So congratulations on being our 2022 faithful servant. Thank you. Thank you. Bill's going to give a response. Well, you've seen the movie, and now you can also read the book at the table. <laughs> yeah, always have to lower these things. Well, I mean, this one's not going to stay. Oh, like Got to balance it. Okay. Um, so not much. <laughs> I get it. You can hold it. I get on my tiptoes. <laughs> there. Um, so I was going to say, there's, you've seen the movie, you've, uh, you can read the book on the table, and not much left for me to say. <laughs> um, I do want to warn Barry that um, Callie may not be his friend anymore after reminding us of that name she used to go by <laughs> years ago. <laughs> She's tried very hard to put <laughs> oh, sorry. that in the past, but you know, uh, <laughs> yeah. But it's, it's so good to see you here this evening, to see so many of you here uh, to support the seminary. Uh, I've actually spent a, a total of four years at RPTS, um, and uh, it's had a very significant influence on my life, a very significant impact and blessing on my life. And many faithful servants have uh, come out of our seminary, uh, but the only reason that there are any faithful servants is because we have a faithful God. And as I look back on my life, I can just, I, I've been looking back and just thinking of all the faithful servants that God has brought into my life and um, just the way that God has used them in my life. And I'm, I'm thankful for uh, parents. I grew up in Beaver Falls and went to College Hill Church and they took me to church faithfully every week. I, uh, it wasn't something I particularly enjoyed when I was a kid. Uh, I couldn't wait for the pastor to say amen at the, at the end of the service. And um, I, I did try to give the impression of being a, a good boy and um, uh, but the appearance of being a good Christian, but, but God could see my heart. Um, years later, I found out that there were a number of faithful servants there at College Hill Church who were praying for me. Uh, I wasn't aware of it at the time, but I think they could see through the facade, and um, they were faithful in, in praying for me. And one way that God answered their prayers uh, was when I was in my, toward the end of my high school years, uh, when I was leading a, a really a double life, um, trying to look good every week at church and then out with my friends um, in, into all kinds of sin. And uh, the way that God answered their prayers was he, he brought a pastor to our church to, who preached the gospel so powerfully. Jack White uh, came to be our pastor. And in almost every sermon, he would have an application for those who were not trusting in Jesus Christ. I knew he meant me. I knew he meant me. Um, and whenever the word was preached, it, it, was, it bothered me. Um, it made me uncomfortable. Um, I, I knew that if I didn't repent and turn to the Lord, um, I could end up in hell for eternity. And this really went on for about two or three years in my life. I could remember this, there was this battle going on in my heart. I, I knew that I needed to come to Christ. But then I would think about what would my friends think, um, 
peer pressure was really keeping me from, from the, the most important thing anyone can do in this life. And uh, it was condemning me to an eternity of suffering and, and keeping me from, from an eternity of uh, pleasure with the Lord. Uh, perhaps there's someone here this evening who can identify with this. And if, if what others are thinking is keeping you from eternal salvation, I would urge you not to put off coming to Christ. Put your trust in him. Um, all this time, the, the words of the Bible uh, were working in my heart. The sermons were uh, there every week. And um, finally, 57 years ago this month, uh, I put my trust in him. And um, he brought me to himself, and uh, he's been faithful to me uh, ever since. Um, even before I put my trust in him, he was faithful in, in working out all these, these uh, ways that he was going to bring me to himself. And the Lord changed the direction of my life back then. Um, I was an engineering major at Geneva College. Uh, but as my senior year uh, was approaching, uh, I began to sense that the Lord might be calling me into some kind of a full-time Christian ministry. Now, you can serve the Lord faithfully as an engineer, and um, you can certainly honor him in that. But it, I sensed that the Lord might be calling me to serve him in another country. I wasn't sure at the time what that country might be. Um, but the summer before my senior year, uh, I became aware of an opportunity that our denominational mission board had uh, that involved a commitment of at least three years. Uh, it involved a year of training at RPTS, and that uh, was followed by at least two years in Cyprus, uh, teaching in our mission schools and doing evangelistic and personal work uh, among young people in Cyprus. Uh, it was called the CCC program. I think some joke that maybe it was corrupted covenant or children that it stood for. Um, <laughs> But actually, it was, it was the Christian Corps for Cyprus. And um, there were five of us that entered the CCC program in the fall of 1967. Uh, Kathy Elliott Stiegel, uh, Mary Madison Meeker, Dick Ayers, Dan Copeland, and myself. Now, Mary ended up not going to Cyprus uh, with the rest of us, but she was very much a part of our team as we had that year uh, in the seminary. I'm very sad to report that Mary passed away just a little less than a week ago. Um, during this year, uh, during that year, we were prepared by a number of God's faithful servants at the seminary, among them Clark Copeland, who taught us from the book of Acts. Uh, Ken Smith was there to teach us how to present the gospel, and uh, we even went door to door around the seminary neighborhood. Uh, then in the summer of 1968, Kathy, Dan, Dick, and I flew out to Cyprus, and, and I believe those years in Cyprus were life-changing for all of us. I know they were for me. Um, since I believed God might be calling me to overseas mission work, well, some had suggested I should try to pick up a little Greek while I was there. Um, I took that very seriously. <laughs> and, well, you met, you met Callie. <laughs> and uh, she was born and raised in Cyprus and uh, came to, to Christ through our mission there. And um, we had known each other from Geneva College. Um, basically, she was a friend of my sister. Uh, she didn't like me for a while and then <laughs> decided maybe I wasn't too bad. Um, we were, the Lord brought us together in Cyprus. We were married there in Nicosia in 1969. And she's been a faithful companion at my side going on 53 years now. Uh, that same year, Ron Stiegel also joined our team. And he and Kathy were actually buried in, in our apartment, in our living room. Uh, there was a picture of them there in their, their wedding. And uh, they're here with us this evening. And so it's really exciting to see them again and to catch up with them some. Um, during our time in Cyprus, there were a number of young people in the, that uh, professed faith in Christ. Some of them are still walking with the Lord, although sadly a number have fallen away from their first commitment. Um, before... Callie and I were married. Uh, I lived for a year in the American Academy boarding house uh, responsible for a number of Greek-speaking teenage boys. And uh, those boys seemed to make it their mission to teach me Greek. Um, and I basically learned Greek by ear. Um, but the downside, is this, downside of this was after we were married, uh, Callie had to weed a few colorful words uh, from my vocabulary. Uh, but anyway, my experience in Cyprus confirmed to me that 
I could learn to speak a foreign language and that the Lord wanted me in, in this kind of a ministry. Now, by the end of um, those, the two years that we had in Cyprus, the, the one year together as a married couple, um, I had a growing conviction uh, that God was calling me to serve him in the pastoral ministry. So on returning to the U.S. in 1970, I enrolled, enrolled again in the RPTS under the care of Allegheny's Presbytery. And when I entered the seminary, Callie and I felt that after my three years, uh, we would return to Cyprus uh, where I could serve as a pastor. But by my third year, uh, it was becoming clear that the door to Cyprus might be closing for us. The, our mission board was f phasing out, sending new missionaries back to Cyprus. And during my senior year, I remember asking Callie if she was prepared to go anywhere that the Lord would send us. And she said, I'd go anywhere but Africa or Japan. <laughs> you may have an idea of how that works. <laughs> Um, and I asked her if she would pray about this, and we prayed about it. Uh, a couple of weeks later, she said, I think I'm ready to go uh, anywhere the Lord sends us. And, and not long after that, uh, I was at a meeting of our global mission board, and uh, Paul McCracken came out of um, a Japan committee meeting and uh, asked me if I would come in, and he said, we're thinking of sending a pastor couple to Japan, and, and we think you're the ones. Well... I wasn't sure, but I'd say that we're open to pray about that. And uh, I called Callie, and she was actually excited at the idea. Uh, we prayed about it. We talked with some who had served there. We sought counsel, uh, and we came to the conviction that this was God's call on us. So in the fall of uh, 1973, Callie and I took a semester of Japanese at Pitt University. And then at my, uh, after my ordination at the end of the year, um, we flew out to Japan on January 1st, 1974. Now, I, I count it a privilege to have served with a number of faithful servants in Japan. Uh, there were veteran missionaries there. Uh, Sam and Grace Boyle were there in their final year of service in Japan, and what an honor uh, to serve on the same mission field with these veteran missionaries to China and Japan. And, and two of their daughters are sitting over at this. This is a special table over here tonight. They've got the, the Steagles and, and uh, uh, Chris and, and Patricia uh, there. Um, Gene and Ruth Spear were there in Japan. Jim and Ruth Pennington arrived a year later. And um, after a few years, Charlie Leach came uh, as a single man and later married Sue. And uh, some of these faithful servants have passed away, but uh, all of them we consider dear friends. Um, a few months after our arrival in Japan, our first daughter, Evniki, was born. About a year and a half later, Ivani. And during our first furlough, Christina. And they're all three sitting here at this other table. Um, we're happy to, that they would, could come to be here the, tonight. Um, after uh, about a year in Japan, I was asked to fill in for a year as the pastor of the Okamoto Keiaku congregation, uh, while Gene Spear and family took a year's furlough in the U.S. And I would serve along with a young seminary student named Shigeru Takiura. Um, he and I would take turns preaching on the Lord's Days. And um, then after that year at Keiaku, uh, Callie and I were asked to move to a, the north part of uh, Kobe. Uh, that, we were in the city of Kobe. And um, uh, we were asked to begin a new mission station there called the Kita Suzerandai Mission Station. And uh, after initial prayer meetings and going door to door, um, we were able to start a regular worship service uh, in our home on the Lord's Days. These girls can remember setting up chairs every Saturday night to accommodate the people. Now, we started off with an afternoon service, and the idea was that some members of other congregations um, could join us to encourage us in the beginning. And also, having an, having an afternoon service freed me to preach when needed in some of the other congregations. And uh, Pastor Toshio Masanaga of Higashitsuma Church was going through a period of poor health, and so I was often asked to preach in his congregation at Higashisuma in the mornings. And in spite of his health, Pastor Masanago is always there um, in the worship service, and he was always a great encourage to me. I consider him another faithful servant that God used greatly in my life in Japan. Well, the Lord blessed our work there in Kita Suzerande. Over time, we had 25 to 30 attending regularly, a number of um, new believers professing faith and being baptized. But then sometime in the mid-'90s, um, Callie and I began to sense that perhaps 
uh, we had served enough time in, min in that uh, mission station. Perhaps it was time for someone with differing gifts uh, to take over what the Lord had started through us. And just about that time, a new congregation had been organized in Cyprus, and um, they were looking to call a pastor. And so in 1996, uh, Trinity Christian Community Fellowship, or TCCF as we called it, um, in Larnaca, Cyprus, uh, made out a call to me uh, to come back to Cyprus to be their pastor. And the timing just seemed right for us at the time. It was not, not easy to pull up uh, the roots we had established in more than 23 years in Japan, uh, but we believed God was calling us back to Cyprus. So in the summer of 1997, we stopped in Beaver Falls here for about a month, just long enough to see Evniki and John married. And then two days after their wedding, uh, we flew to Larnaca. Uh, Adam Mastris and Paul Burgess were two elders of TCCF. Later, uh, Joe Worsham came to fill in as uh, principal of American Academy in Nicosia, and we invited Joe to serve with us on the session. I think it was for about three years. They're all faithful servants, and uh, Kelly and I are blessed to have Adam and Jeanette, Paul and Lisa, Joe and Donna as dear friends. And when I accepted that call to Cyprus, Kelly and I never dreamed uh, what kind of experiences uh, we would have over the next 14 years. Uh, we went back to Cyprus expecting to be part of a congregation made up of uh, mostly of Greek Cypriots married to foreigners, where well, actually Kali and I would fit right in. Um, but about two years after our return to Cyprus, the Lord brought a Japanese lady and her three sons to enroll in the American Academy, uh, where we had both been teaching part-time. And uh, I had just begun to focus on my conversational Greek that um, we found ourselves involved in a weekly Bible study with, in Japanese. Um, Eiko Takagi and her three sons came to know Christ in Cyprus, and uh, she now lives in Romania, and where she's a faithful witness, and two of her sons uh, are missionaries in other parts of the world. Um, so I just love to remember the, the ways that the Lord so often did the unexpected. I, I could also mention back in Japan, Kali and I met a Cypriot lady in the hospital, and later, she and her family came to know the Lord in Japan. So this is the way the Lord works. You talk about cross-culture, I guess. Um, during our time there, Cyprus was overwhelmed with an influx of uh, refugees, especially from the Middle East. And uh, what began as a jail ministry to illegal aliens led to a large number of asylum seekers attending our worship services, with a number of them uh, professing faith and receiving baptism. Now, as I mentioned, our congregation in Larnaca was mostly made up of uh, Greek Cypriots married to English-speaking foreigners. Well, among them were uh, Kevin and Yota Florent, and um, they were our neighbors, and we got to know them, and they eventually became a core family in our congregation. Kevin and Yota are here at this special table tonight with two of their daughters, uh, Octavia and Isabel, and uh, Yasmin is in London, or, yeah, she's in London for a semester. Um, we're, we're just um, excited to have them here and understand there, there's some plans for a move to this area, and we're really excited about that. Um, well, I could go on and on, and uh, I know it's, it's, it's getting late, but I'm just thankful for this opportunity uh, to reflect on just how faithful the Lord has been to us over the years. In uh, Philippians 1, 6, Paul, 6, Paul writes, I'm sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. And in 1 Thessalonians 5.24, he who calls you is faithful, he will surely do it. And I believe that God has, has filled that, fulfilled that faithfulness in our lives. So I'm just very thankful, Lord, to the, to the Lord for all of this. Thank you very much.